What could the price of uranium be by the end of 2022? I'm going to give you my prediction. I'm also going to cover some big news out of Kazatomprom, the world's biggest uranium producer. We're gonna talk a little bit about Germany and their energy crisis. They just shut down three nuclear power plants and they are going to shut down the rest very soon by the end of the year. I'm gonna show you some alarming numbers from them and really talk about where I see the uranium sector going this year. Very positive day for uranium. So hit that like and subscribe button below. And this is a scheduled tweet and this was done back in 2020 February I believe it was 13th and I said uranium is around $25 I said was I right that it would be over $75 uh, today in the future uranium and uh, this I reposted back last September because we had ran very fast we we're at $47 and you know uranium peaked about 52 bucks so this was uh, something just fun I did and uh, I still believe that I believe that we could hit $75 you know we ran you know 50 60 percent almost when we hit 51 52 dollars in spot and I think it could hit $75 easily. It was a lot of fun. So that's what, you know, that was just my little fun guess. You know, I'm not, I can't predict the markets, but that's where I see things going. We're in a supply deficit and there's demand growing. So uranium today, first day of the year, it did phenomenal. We can see a lot of the biggest uranium stocks, you know, up 10% plus, and we had pretty good volume in these. Now, uranium on the ASX was closed yesterday. So all the, all the stocks in Australia pretty much were flat today the ones trading on the US stock exchange, but other stocks, you know, uh, are up big in uranium on the OTC as well, as you can see down here, uh, majority of those, you know, up, you know, at least 5%. Now, what's interesting about this is, you know, we're still down, as you can see, in the last 52 weeks, a lot of uranium stocks are still down. In the future, there's gonna be a lot of ESG money coming, and that's what I actually said earlier, I tweeted that out as well, that I think that there's going to be big funds buying up, not just uranium, uranium stocks, but uranium related companies. I did cover Lightbridge yesterday and it's up 13%. This is very positive. I, a lot of people I think were just selling out. We had a big year in uranium. A lot of people cashed out or they cashed in their profits or they were down. So they bought in, you know, September, they might've been down. So they could have tax lost harvest some of those uh, losses or gains. So, you know, that just tells me that there's a lot of investors coming back. You know, we saw, you know, big moves today and the market, you know, overall today wasn't up like crazy. 10 things that the nuclear sector specifically had that were positive. The bipartisan infrastructure legislation includes 6 billion to establish a new civil nuclear credit program. So it's gonna rescue a lot of these reactors. So that was one thing, recap. The next is the US is moving forward with advanced nuclear demonstration projects that will expand access to clean energy and provide new job opportunities. So X Energy is planning to run this new small modular reactor. And uh, these are great. You know, there, there's multiple companies doing this. Uh, I've covered a bunch of them and uh, they're starting to really ramp up small modular reactors and get them actually into production by like 2028, maybe sooner. These could be produced, you know, in a couple years. Department of Energy announced plans to establish a HALU. That's the field that these reactors are gonna be used. Program to directly address a pressing field need by the nuclear industry so they're going to uh, possibly in 20 this year 2022 there's congressional appropriations for this so that's going to be big for it so a lot of these stocks we saw like I said Lightbridge LTBR and LEU they were up big today Department of Energy is seeking feedback on using a consent based sitting process to identify sites to store the nation's spent nuclear fuel so they're they're also doing the same thing with this it's, it's really positive because it's going to bring light that there's actually not that much fuel out there about the size of a football field maybe I think it's eight meters deep or so the last 70 years so hopefully this you know brings money and, and we can see safer nuclear fuel storage the next one is the first complete accidental tolerant fuel assembly so basically this new fuel assemblies that these companies are building are going to be meltdown proof pretty much they're going to be a lot safer they're going to be faster the reactors won't be down as much and there won't be you know, possible issues that these reactors could have. A next big one that I really actually forgot about was the first 3D printed safety brackets and operation in these older, these light water reactors. So this is something that can be scaled and they can really produce a lot faster. Elon Musk is a big user of this type of technology and this is great. Next, Exelon to modernize their generation station control room, one of the biggest ones there. So they're actually in the next few years going to put money into 
you know, revitalizing these these plants because a lot of them, these older ones that can last a while, they still need to have stuff upgraded. Now, when I was in the military, a lot of our ships, we still had stuff from the 50s and 60s, you know, computers, uh, you know, instruments that they don't really make, you know, in the, the modern day, they don't really update. So, you know, a lot of these ships still have really old technology. And I think the, the nuclear power plants are the same. So they were gonna revamp this. So money's going to that. The next one is demonstrating clean hydrogen production. They're actually put 80 million to demonstrate that they can Basically, they can store this hydrogen and produce approximately 200 megawatts of electricity uh, that they can use during this high demand uh, via this hydrogen. So this is great. It's going to lower hydrogen costs down and they're going to be able to produce it at the nuclear power plant there. And that's pretty cool. The next one's supporting moon to Mars program. This is NASA. So they're awarding multiple millions of dollars for not only nuclear thermal propulsion, but these small modular reactors for space. This is really the future this is a demand that no one has listed. One of the things that I have in the future by 2030, I said this, this is going to be a demand for the sector. And the next one is strengthening international partnerships. So new scale, I've talked about them. They're going to be a new nuclear power company that's going to do small modular reactors under the ticker symbol SMR. And they are actually getting a lot of support and cooperation from governments around the world. And this is great because a lot of countries like China want to establish small modular reactors. And, you know, they could be ordering these. These are a lot of positive things that we've seen that I really, a lot of people don't talk about. You know, you might not have heard. The next thing is more of a negative thing for the German people, but it is positive for the overall sector because it's going to, I think, demonstrate and show that nuclear nuclear power is needed. Now, Germany, we, we've covered it before, is obviously shutting down three of the six nuclear power plants, and they're starting to produce a lot more greenhouse gases just in the last few days. This was about 147 when I first did this a few days ago for Germany that they're putting out grams of carbon, and now today it's 257. So we've seen just a massive jump. Now, Germany gets a lot of their power from wind. Now, it doesn't always blow wind, right? So they have lots of money put into these wind generators that produce electricity. Now the wind, if it's not blowing, they're gonna have to import power and it's usually nuclear power from their neighbors. But it is kind of interesting to see how much of their dependency is on wind. And with shutting down nuclear, I think this is going to really show the world and you know the EU that nuclear is needed. And most, like I said, most of their power they're producing is going to be wind and that is not going to cut it. Especially for the baseload power, if you wanna power electric vehicles and things of that nature that they're looking to push towards. Now, small modular reactors, they can actually produce a lot more energy per the cost you know, for this, and it puts out zero greenhouse gases. Last thing we wanna look at is Kazatomprom. So Kazatomprom is the biggest uranium producer in the world, and in their country, they actually are having protests on natural gas prices. As you can see here, a lot of people are starting to protest this, and it's, uh, it's really because the costs have gone up like crazy, the gas hike. So they pretty much doubled to about 28 cents per liter. The old price was, I think, about 15 cents. So in this small amount of time, liquid natural gas Gas. And this is a country that produces the most uranium in the world, you know, for the nuclear reactors. Now we're going to look at Kazatom Prom's charts, and they are projecting a big supply impact in the next couple years that a lot of people, including these these companies, these utility companies you know, hoped that they would have. So they're gonna be cutting back. And I think there's gonna be a lot less than they even projected. You know, a lot less tons to 17,000. 700 million pounds of demand from these utility companies are returning to the market now. We're now, this was 2021 they projected this, and now it's already 2022. We're seeing these utility contracts cut off dramatically this year and going in every year to the 2000, pretty much 20, Five, and that's when we're really seeing a big drop off where a lot of utility companies are like less than 15% covered, I think pretty much the whole sector. So we're gonna see long-term contracts starting and we're going
going to see massive amounts of buying, not only in the spot market, but long-term market or really, that's what really matters. So the last thing we'll cover is because Adam Prom, a lot of people forgot about this. They signed the physical uranium fund investment agreement. This was with the company ANU Energy. And I like to call them Sputnik because they're like Sput. I think this year is going to be big. So I think they're going to be buying up a lot of spot uranium as well because of that supply cuts that they did not anticipate. So will we see uranium hit $75 by June of 2022, June 14th? That post will tweet. And if it's not, you know, it's still not the end of the world. I think this is going to be a longer term uranium bull market than anyone really expected. We are seeing record demand. We are seeing record supply cuts. And I think a lot of money is going to be flowing into the sector very, very soon. So it was an amazing day. Hopefully you liked this video. Hit the like and subscribe button below. And and until next time.